Hey there, all you Hellblazers. Welcome back to the Newcastle Crew, a Southgate Media Group podcast dedicated to all things related to the character of John Constantine. I am Lilith, and joining me as always is... Hey everyone, it's Phil Parrish. Up for discussion today is part two in our new 52 journey, that is Constantine. The issue's title is The Blind Man. And uh, let's see, same old, same old writing team, of course. Ray Fox, Jeff Lemire. With the art by Renato Guides, uh, Marcelo Mayo, and uh, we had a new letterer, Carlos uh, Manguel. I love this cover. This cover is my everything. What? John, John Constantine appearing to be dead in the street with smoke billowing yeah, out of him? Yes. You, you gotta imagine that's literally when, if they ever decide to get t- rid of this character, that's how it's gonna go out. Mm-hmm. Just a dirty rat in the streets. Oh that's yeah, how he's lived his life. you know it's not it's not gonna end good, whenever it ends. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so this is like one of my favorite issues in the arc. Obviously, Phil should know why. Because uh, we get a little supporting character. The little the Spectre. Yeah, um, almost my it's like my third favorite Constantine team up actually. Of course, one thing being the first, uh, Zantana being the second. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What about you? Is he uh, in your top five of favorite Constantine team ups? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm pr- probably this probably the same with uh, you. Like, uh, love the Swamp Thing and the Zatanna, and of course Spectre. I mean, it's like that's like the they just all had a book together. Mm. I think that would be actually awesome. I was I was so gonna. Uh, mess with you be like oh i know mr e was in this i know you i knew you love it <laughs> that would have been funny yeah he's still here <laughs> mm, looking all mr negative um this this book has i think this is one thing that uh all constantine books kind of probably have in common is that they do travel the world a lot because you know he's a mystic dark arts kind of guy mm-hmm yeah, because, it's like, would you really buy it if he was in the same city every issue? I mean, New York, yeah, you kind of can, because everybody well, comes. <laughs> yeah, but with supernatural menaces, it's like, they're not all going to come to him every issue, though. True. And I don't mind it. Yeah. But sometimes, like, I like to have, like, a little reservoir dog field and just kind of stay. In oh, yeah. Place. I'm not saying he has to travel every arc, but, yeah, sometimes you got to for credibility's sake, gotta be like, uh, yeah, I gotta fly somewhere. Exactly. Uh, so what's going on in this issue? John's kind of talking about, like, you know, how he sees magic, basically, and, you know, he admits that pretty much he's an addict when it comes to magic. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's really cool, the second issue in, that he's just that self-aware of it, you know? Mm Mm-hmm. And so we're still looking for a Croydon's compass or whatever. It's been located. He's already stolen that piece, you know, from Sargon, the sorceress. And, uh, you know, legend goes, you know, no one knows, uh, you know, nobody should have that kind of power, blah, blah, blah. And John's like, well, you know, it, it'll be safe with me. <laughs> so he goes looking for the second piece is pretty much it. And all these cabs, I'm like, where's Chaz at? <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> yeah yeah I'm, it's like it's like okay it's already issue two you're already bringing in specter and uh you got all the sorcerers last issue but it's like okay but you're not bringing in chaz yet <laughs> and like he gets kidnapped by a group of child soldiers and i'm like only constantine this only this would only happen to constantine and he's like doing like magic tricks for them you know like like a stage magician would do like hey look i got your bullet oh it's behind your ear <laughs> so funny um and then so like uh the one guy he like shows up he's got like the he wants the needle and he's like is that you mr e (laughs) (laughs) it's so funny the way he did it Uh um and it's like yeah he's blind but he's still a dangerous dude but john's still like smirking the whole time Mm -hmm. but he's tied up and i'm just like this is why you gotta love John. He's just, you know, confident in his ability to finesse himself out of any situation. 
even though even though he looks a mess, he never lets him see him sweat. Exactly. Oh, so he escapes with a red-haired man. Oh. That's all I'm gonna say. Because they don't really reveal it until a couple of like frames later or whatever. Mm-hmm. Although you kind of saw it coming if you opened that gatefold cover. Exactly. <laughs> For those that aren't familiar with it, I guess it was a shock. Um, Although I have to give it to them, they were they didn't uh, they didn't spoil it until you like actually opened the cover. Oh, um, so that was really funny. He goes, "Bruh, you've been marked." <laughs> Divine vengeance. And I'm just like, "Oh snap! How's he gonna get out of this one?" Because the specter's no joke, man. Mm-hmm. And Constantine's like, oh, "Yeah, but you're kind of blocked." <laughs> he's like, he's like, he's like. He's just like, one day you can have me, you know, let me do your dirty work and, you know, come see me in 30, 40 years. <laughs> we'll talk. And so the plot twist is that Chris was basically a friend of John's. And I'm just like, awkward. Mm-hmm. Um, and John, like, even admits that he knows he deserves judgment. So it's just like, good, good. Self-aware. I like that. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, as much as he tries to downplay it, Constantine's not stupid. And I also like that he, it's not like he's necessarily on a redemption arc, he's just kind of like tooling around, doing what he does, you know? Mm -hmm. If he can help somebody, fine, but if he can con somebody, great. (laughs) You know what I mean? Yeah. I I, I like that, that whole moral, well, not even, it's not even uh, morally great, it's just pretty much uh, do what I want, (laughs) worry about it later kind of guy. Mm-hmm. That's kind of refreshing in the comic books, I think. Oh yeah, I mean it's just like basically, yeah, people get hurt, but hey, if I don't stop this, the, <laughs> the world's get you know the world could be in trouble. Yeah. So he warns him that yeah, I'm gonna come get what's mine later, and then like John goes into that temple and he finds the dial, and then like he comes back to London. Yeah, well, Mr. E gets, Mr. E gets the first half, the first part he had, yeah. but then he, yeah, he gets the dial. She's like, you win some, you lose some. <laughs> so he's like, so now he's determined to steal the rest of the compass parts for himself. Because mm. he needs to just do it to prove himself that he can do it. And that's, that's just great to me. <laughs> yeah. Like, challenge accepted. <laughs> <laughs> Suit up! Uh, then we see Sargon and Mystery E um, learning that John escaped, and then he's just like, uh, he seeks out the lens in London, and they're like, alright, we're gonna go head him off, and we're gonna unleash some unspeakable horror on the city. <laughs> I like the ending of a He Man book. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, this is good. Like, this is like better than the first issue to me. Oh, you just you just put that image in my head of like Constantine showing up in Eternia. <laughs> Make it happen. <laughs> but but they just, can meet the Thundercats. They can meet Constantine. <laughs> you just want you just you just want to see him up in He Man's face with you know smoking a cigarette, and be like by the power of Blippin Grayskull. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Not even gonna lie. Um. So. Let me think. Uh, what is my favorite painting? Hmm. I think it's him, uh, where they're climbing the wall of the, the temple. Mm-hmm. Oh, him and uh, Corgan? Yeah. I just like the way that it's shaded and the way the light's hitting. Mm-hmm. It's just very simple, three panels. Very minimal dialogue. Um. Or when he turns into the specter and like yeah. he's got his hand over his eye. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, oh, what did I get myself into? <laughs> Those are really good. Um. I also, I don't know that that last page just screams Constantine story to me. 
Yeah. All the all the like dead people in the in London hanging in London. I'm like that's so Constantine. And you know this book is old because at the very last page, channel fifty two. Mm-hmm. <laughs> With Harley Quinn and a Robin logo. Twenty thirteen. Hey, this is when they killed Damien. For a while. And what's this blue creature coming out? Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh God. Good times, man. It's so much has changed in such a short little amount of time. Like literally this book's been redid like four different times. <laughs> yeah, I mean this I mean this book's almost four years old. Uh this one is an A for me. Just a flat A. Yes. Yeah, I gotta agree with that. My favorite my favorite line has to be the joke he's telling Mr. E. He's like, Yeah, <laughs> the whole bartender thing. Oh no. Yes. <laughs> He's like, and the bartender says, your pal where? And he disappears. And it's... It's just, yeah, he's just standing there waiting for the joke. Yes, and? I love, that's, that is so Constantine. I love it. You know what? I'm going to do it. Shameless plugs, I guess. You can always email us, newcastlecrew at gmail.com. Uh, give us a like on Facebook, facebook.com slash newcastlecrewpodcast. And our Twitter is at newcastlecrew. And if anyone has any... Uh, Somebody walks into a bar jokes and they want to tell you, Lilith, where can they send those to you? Oh, please be sure to send them to at Lilith Hellfire or at Adventures in FG. Or you can even leave it in a comment on my website, adventuresinfairandgirling.com. But you feel? Mine are flashy, but you can always uh, write to me, nightwingpdp at gmail.com. On Twitter, I am at nightwingpdp. But I also want to encourage you guys to check out South Ma- southgatemediagroup.com, where you can find a list of all our 100 plus podcasts. Also find out information about the host. Uh, a way to donate to help keep this podcast network afloat and check out some pretty cool blogs that a certain someone writes for. Who? Who, me? I was talking about Charlie. <laughs> oh, please. He hasn't written that blog in how long? I know. I'm teasing. and giving me encouragement. <laughs> Come on, Charlie. You can do it. True Believer's blog is pretty cool. Not gonna lie. Thank you. Even though it's the other. It's the competition. Hopefully you won't be dead in the streets and can join us next week. <laughs> Until then, Newcastle Cruise signing off. So cheerful.